Chapters 1 through 7 of the Book of Judges from the Holy Bible in Modern English. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Holy Bible in Modern English, translated by Ferrar Fenton. The Book of Judges, Chapters 1 through 7. Chapter 1. After the death of Joshua, the children of Israel inquired of the ever living, who shall lead us against the Canaanites to make war with them? The Lord replied, Judah shall go up, and I will give the country into his power. Judah, however, said to Simeon his brother, Go up with me to my district, and we will fight with the Canaanites, and then I will go with you to your district. So Simeon went with them. Judah accordingly went up, and the ever-living gave the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their power, and they defeated them in Bezek, with a loss of ten thousand men. Then they met the prince of Bezek at Bezek, and fought with him, and defeated the Canaanites and Perizzites, and the prince of Bezek fled, but they pursued after, and captured him, and cut off the thumbs of his hands and feet. Then the prince of Bezek said, Seven kings with the thumbs of their hands and feet cut off were waiters beside my table. As I did, God has repaid to me. They afterwards brought him to Jerusalem, where he died. The children of Judah next besieged Jerusalem and captured and conquered it by the edge of the sword, and delivered the city to fire. After that the sons of Judah proceeded to make war with the Canaanites who occupied the hills, the south, and the pastures. Then Judah marched against the Canaanites who held Hebron, and defeated Sheshai, and Achimon, and Thalmai, and marched from there to the possessors of Debir, where Caleb said, Whoever conquers Krith Sefer and captures it, I will give him my daughter Aksa for a wife. So Aphnial, the son of Kenez, the younger brother of Caleb, captured it from them, and he gave Aksa his daughter to him as a wife. Now as she was coming, he suggested to her to ask an estate from her father, so she dismounted from her ass, when Caleb asked her, What do you want? And she replied, Give me a blessing. With the southern land you have given me, give me springs of water. So Caleb gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. The sons of Kenai, the father-in-law of Moses, had come up from the city of the palm trees with the sons of Judah into the desert of Judah, which is to the south of Arad, and marched and lived with that people. Then Judah went with Simeon his brother, and conquered the Canaanites inhabiting Zephath, and destroyed it, and called the name of the town Karma. Judah also captured Gaza and its district, and Ashkelon and its district, and Akron and its district, for the ever-living was with Judah, and he took possession of the highlands. But they could not drive out the population of the plains, because they had iron chariots. Hebron was given to Caleb as Moses had promised, and he drove the three sons of Anak from it. But the Jebusites continued in Jerusalem, for the sons of Benjamin could not drive them out. So the Jebusites continued to reside with the sons of Benjamin in Jerusalem to this day. The house of Joseph also went up to Bethel, and the ever-living was with them. So the house of Joseph was successful against Bethel. The name of the town was formerly Luz. And the scouts saw a man who came out from the city and said to him, Show us, we pray, the entrance into the town, and we will reward you. So he showed them an entrance to the city, and they took the city with the sword, but they sent the man away with all his family who went to the country of the Hittites, and built a town and called it by the name of Luz, and it bears that name to this day. Manasseh also did not disperse the people of Bethshan with its villages, and Thanak with its villages, or the inhabitants of Iblam with its villages, or the population of Megiddo with its villages, but permitted the Canaanites to reside in that country. But when Israel prevailed, it laid the Canaanites under tribute, and did not expel them. Ephraim also did not expel the Canaanite population of Gezer, or the Canaanite population from around Gezer. Zebulun also did not expel the population from Kitan, the inhabitants from the riverside, or the Canaanite population from amongst itself, but put them under tribute. Ashur did not expel the population from Akka, or the inhabitants of Zidon, or Akbal, or Akzib, or Kabda, or Afik, or Rikob, but the Asherites resided amongst the Canaanite population of the country, for they did not expel them. Naphtali did not dispossess the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh, or the population of Beth Anath, but resided amongst the Canaanite population of the country. 
and the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh and Beth Anath were tributary to them. The Amorites also resisted the sons of Gad in the highlands, although they were not able to descend to the plains. Therefore they allowed the Amorites to occupy the eastern hills at Aelon and Shalbim and Thikbad alongside the house of Joseph, and they paid tribute. And the boundary of the Amorites was from the ascent of Akrabim, from Selah and upwards. Chapter 2 But a messenger of the ever-living came from Gilgal to Bochim, who said, I brought you up from Mitzrayim, and conducted you to the country which I promised to your ancestors, declaring, I will not break my covenant with you for ever, but you shall not make a treaty with the inhabitants of this country, but strike down their altars. However, you have not listened to my voice. Why have you done so when I said, If you do not drive them out from you, they will be thorns, and their gods will be snares to you? When the messenger of the ever-living addressed this speech to the parliament of the children of Israel, the people lifted up their voices and wept, and called the name of that valley the Weepings, and sacrificed there to the ever-living. When Joshua dismissed the people, the children went each to his share, to take possession of the country, and the people served the ever-living all the days of Joshua, and all the time of the old men who survived Joshua, who had seen all the great acts of the ever-living which he did for Israel. Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the ever-living, died at a hundred and ten years of age, and they buried him within the bounds of his estate, at Thimnath, in Mount Ephraim, on the north of the hill of Gash. But when all that generation were added to their fathers, there arose another generation after them who knew not the ever-living or the acts which he did for Israel. Then the children of Israel did wrong in the sight of the ever-living, and passed over to Baal, and forsook the ever-living God of their fathers, who brought them out of the land of the Mitzrayim, and went after the gods of the nations who surrounded them, and worshipped them, and provoked the ever-living. Thus they forsook the ever-living, and worshipped Ashtaroth. Then the anger of the ever-living burnt against Israel, and he gave them to the hand of robbers who robbed them, and delivered them to the power of their enemies all round, and they were not able to stand before their enemies. Wherever they went, the hand of the ever-living was against them for evil, as the ever-living had said, and as the ever-living had threatened them, and he greatly afflicted them. The ever-living afterwards raised up judges who protected them from the powers of the robbers, Yet, however, they would not listen to their judges, for they went whoring after other gods and worshipped them, turning soon from the path which their fathers followed. That of listening to the commands of the ever-living, they did it not. But when the ever-living caused some of the judges to arise, and the ever-living was with that judge, he saved them from the hand of their enemies, for the ever-living pitied their groans under their adversaries and oppressors. But when that judge died, they turned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers by following seducing gods and serving and worshipping them. They ceased not from their offenses and from making their way hard. Then the anger of the ever-living burnt against Israel, and he said, Because this nation has broken my covenant which I communicated to their ancestors and does not listen to my word, I also will not continue to drive out before them any of the nations whom Joshua left at his death, so that I may try Israel by them, whether they will keep the path of the ever-living and walk in it as their fathers kept it, or not. So the ever-living gave them not those nations, and did not dispossess them of the mountains, and gave them not to the hand of Joshua. Chapter 3 and these are the nations whom the ever-living permitted to try Israel, all who are not acquainted with the wars of Canaan, so that the generations of the children of Israel might learn war, which they otherwise would not have known. The five lordships of the Philistines, and all the Canaanites, and Zidonians, and the Hivites, inhabiting the hills of the Lebanon, from the hill of Baal Hermon to the pass of Kemath. They were also to try Israel to teach them to listen to the commands of the ever-living, which he dictated to their fathers by the hand of Moses. So the children of Israel resided amongst the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and took their daughters to themselves for wise, and gave their daughters to their sons, and served their gods. The children of Israel also did wrong in the sight of the ever-living, and forsook their ever-living God, and served Balaam and Ashtaroth. 
the anger of the ever-living consequently burnt against israel and he delivered them to the power of koshan ramathim king of aram between the rivers and the children of israel were subject to koshan ramathim for nine years then the sons of israel cried to the ever-living and the ever-living sent a savior for israel in athnael the descendant of kenez the youngest brother of caleb who saved them for the spirit of the ever-living was upon him and he judged israel and went out to war and the ever-living gave kashan ramathim to his hand thus the country had peace for forty years until athnael ben kenez died the children of Israel, however, continued to do wrong in the sight of the ever-living. So the ever-living emboldened Aglon, king of Moab, against Israel, because they did wrong in the eyes of the ever-living. And he added to himself the children of Ammon, and Amalek, and Zabin, and defeated Israel, and seized the town of palm-trees. The sons of Israel consequently served Aglon, king of Moab, eighteen years. Then the children of Israel cried to the ever-living, and the ever-living raised a savior for them, Ahud ben Gera, a Benjaminite, a left-handed man, by whose means the sons of Israel sent the tribute to Aglon, king of Moab. But Ahud made himself a sword of a foot long with a double edge, and bound it under his cloak on his right thigh, when he approached with the tribute to Aglon, king of Moab. Aglon, however, was a very fat man and when he had finished presenting the tribute he sent away the people who carried the tribute but he returned back from the quarries that are in gilgal and said i desire a word in private between myself and you king and he replied all right and sent away all who stood about him then ahud came to him and he sat upon the raised seat which was reserved for himself alone and ahud said there is a message from god with me for you so he rose from his throne then Ahud stretched out his left hand and drew the sword from his thigh and drove it into his belly, and the excrement came out after the blade, but the fat closed up over the blade, for he did not draw the sword from his belly, but it went into the intestines. Then Ahud went out by the private porch and shut the door after him and locked it. But when he was gone, the servants came and looked and saw the door of the chamber locked and said, Perhaps he is lying down in the chamber of his summer house. So they waited until they were alarmed, and seeing no one open the door of the retreat, at length they took a key and opened the door, and saw their prince fallen on the earth dead. But Ahud escaped while they delayed, and passed the quarries, and ran away like a tempest, and then went on and blew a trumpet in Mount Ephraim, and the children of Israel flocked to him from the hills, and he became their leader, and said to them, Follow after me, for the ever-living will give your enemies the Moabites into your hand. So they followed after him, and captured the fords of the Jordan leading to Moab, and permitted no man to pass over. They also cut off from Moab at the same period about ten thousand men, all stout men of valor, and not a man escaped. Moab was consequently from that time subjected to the hand of Israel, and the land was at rest eight years. And after that came Shamgar the son of Anath, who slew six hundred of the Philistines with an ox goad, and delivered Israel chapter four but the children of israel continued to do wrong in the sight of the ever-living therefore the ever-living delivered them to the power of jabin king of canaan who reigned in katzor the commander of whose army was named sisera and he resided in karshith of the heathen but the children of israel cried to the ever-living for he had nine hundred chariots of iron and oppressed the israelites cruelly for ten years at that time a woman deborah a distinguished teacher was a judge in israel and deborah sat under the palm tree of deborah between ramah and bethel and mount ephraim and the israelites went to her for decisions but she sent and summoned barak the son of abinoam from kadesh of naphtali and said to him has not the ever-living god of israel ordered you go and encamp on mount tabor and collect ten thousand men to you from the sons of naphtali and the sons of zebulun and i will draw sisera the commander of the army of jabin with his chariots and his great numbers to you at the river kishon and i will deliver him into your hand but barak replied to her if you will go with me i will go and if you will not go with me i will not go and she answered i will go with you 
however the road you go shall not lead to your honor for the ever-living will give sisera to the hand of a woman then deborah arose and went with barak to kadish where barak invited zebulun and naphtali to kadish and ten thousand men came to his feet and deborah went up with him and heber the kenite who was descended from kien one of the sons of hobab a father-in-law of moses who had also pitched his tent at alon batsanim near kadish and it was reported to sisera that barak bin abinoam had occupied mount tabor sisera consequently summoned all his charioteers with their nine hundred chariots of iron and all his forces from karsheth of the heathen to the river kishon then deborah said to barak arise for this is the day when i will deliver sisera to your hand does not the ever-living go before you so barak descended from mount tabor with the ten thousand men following him and the ever-living routed sisera with all his chariots and all his troops with the sword before barak so that sisera descended from his chariot and fled on foot but barak pursued the charioteers and the infantry to karsheth of the heathen and stormed all the camps of sisera by the sword not sparing one sisera however fled on his feet to the tent of jael the wife of heber the kenite for there was peace between jabin king of katzor and the house of heber the kenite and jael came out to meet sisera and said to him turn in prince turn in to me fear nothing so he entered with her into the tent and she covered him with a cloak then he said to her let me have a little water to drink for i am thirsty and she opened him a bottle of milk and gave him a drink and covered him up again then he said to her stand before the door of the hall and if any man comes to inquire of you and says is there any one here answer there is no one jael the wife of heber however took a peg of the tent and grasped a hammer in her hand and went to him secretly and fixed it on his temples and drove it through to the earth for he was fast asleep so he expired and died then she saw barak pursuing sisera so jael went out to meet him and said to him come and i will show you the man whom you seek and he went with her and saw sisera lying dead with the nail through his temples thus god defeated on that day jabin king of canaan before the israelites and the power of the children of israel increased advanced and strengthened over jabin king of canaan until jabin king of canaan was subdued chapter five then deborah and barak ben abenoam sang saying deborah for free freedom in israel you heroes and people bless the lord barak let kings hear let princes listen i to the lord myself will sing i chant to the ever-living god of israel the troops lord in your advance from seir in your march through the field of edom the earth shook the heavens poured down the storm clouds poured out water the mountains melted before the lord sinai itself before the living god of israel deborah in the days of shamgar son of anath in the days of yal the caravan ceased and travellers went in the bypaths judges ceased in israel ceased till i deborah arose till i arose a mother to israel barak they chose for themselves new gods when there was war at the gates was a shield or a spear to be seen in forty thousand of israel deborah my heart can picture israel heroes among the people bless the lord the troops you riders upon white asses and you who dwell in the plain and the travellers by roadways publish with the sound as of rushing waters the kindness the lord has done the kindness to israel's hamlets when the lord's force rushed down to the dales barak arise arise you deborah awake awake and utter a song deborah arise barak and conquer conqueror son of abinoam let the nobles and people descend the lord sent me to summon heroes come to me ephraim rooted in amalek follow me benjamin from your caves come to me machir with your chieftains with zebulun wielding the writer's pen and issachar's eloquent princes and along with issachar barak who directs the march with skill 
my heart aches for reuben's absence why stayed he among the sheepfolds to hear the cries of his flocks my heart aches for reuben's absence gilad remained beyond the jordan but why stayed dan in his ships and ashur rest on the shore of the sea and continue to lie in his ports zebulun's men risked their lives to death with naphtali from the highlands barak kings came out to the war like canaan's kings at thanak who fought by the brook of megiddo they took no silver as plunder the stars they fought from the skies the stars from their high course fought against sisera the river kishon swept them away that ancient river the river kishon deborah rush strongly along my life how the hoofs of the horses sound with their mighty leapings and prancings curse me Roz, said the man of the lord when cursing curse its people for they came not with help to the lord to help the lord and his heroes but bless the children of jael the wife of heber the kenite bless all the sons of her tent he asked her water she gave him milk she offered him butter on a beautiful dish then she stretched her hand to the nail her right hand to the workman's hammer and sisera pierced through his head and broke and drove through his temples at her feet he bowed fell down at her feet he bowed fell down when he bowed he fell down dead the troops sisera's mother at the evening hour bent and watched from her window what prevents his chariot's return what delays the tramp of his chargers her wise women answered to her nay continued her words to herself have they not found plenty of plunder a lovely girl for the generals and a plunder of robes for sisera a plunder of robes embroidered embroidered robes for the necks of the victors deborah barak and troops lord thus destroy your foes but let your friends march on like the sun in his glory after this the country rested for forty years chapter six then the israelites did wrong in the eyes of the ever-living so the ever-living gave them to the hand of midian twelve years and the power of midian was so strong over israel that the israelites made for themselves entrenchments in the mountains and caves and towers and if the israelites sowed then midian and amalek and the benai kedem came upon and assailed them and wasted the whole breadth of the country to the pass of gaza and left no means of subsistence for israel or sheep or ox or ass for they and their cattle with them advanced with their tents coming in such immense numbers both of themselves and their camels that they could not be counted and went over the country destroying it thus israel was thoroughly exhausted before midian then the children of israel cried to the ever-living and when the israelites cried to the ever-living on account of midian the ever-living sent a man a preacher to the sons of israel and he said to them the ever-living god of israel says thus i brought you from the mitzrayim and brought you from the house of bondage and delivered you from the power of your opponents and swept them before you and gave you this country then i said to you i am your ever-living god you shall not reverence the gods of the amorites in whose country you reside but you would not listen to my voice afterwards the messenger of the ever-living went and sat under the oak which is at aphra belonging to Yoash, and gideon his son was threshing wheat in a wine cellar to hide it from the midianites and the messenger of the ever-living looked in at him and said to him the ever-living is with you brave man but gideon answered him what sir if the ever-living is with us then why has all this come and where are all his wonders that our fathers related to us telling about the bringing us up from mitzrayim for now the ever-living has forsaken us and put us under the foot of midian but the noble man turned to him and replied go with your courage and rescue israel from the hand of midian have i not sent you he however returned me sir how can i rescue israel the regiments of manasseh have failed and i am the youngest of my father's family but the noble man answered to him because i will be with you and you shall defeat the midianites like a single man then he asked him if now i have found favor in your eyes and you have done me the kindness of speaking with me do not remove from here until i come back to you when i will bring my present and present it to you so he replied 
I will sit down until you return. Then Gideon went and killed a goat's kid, and baked an unfermented cake, and placed the meat on a tray, and put the broth in a basin, and brought to him under the oak, and presented it. Then the divine messenger said to him, Take the meat and the biscuit, and ascend to the peak of Luz, and pour out the broth. And he did so, when the messenger of the ever-living extended the end of the staff which he had in his hand, and touched the meat and the biscuit, and fire came from the rock and consumed the meat and the biscuit. Then the messenger of the ever-living went from his sight, and Gideon perceived that he was a messenger from the ever-living. So Gideon exclaimed, Ah, great Lord, I have certainly seen a messenger of the ever-living face to face. And the noble replied to him, Peace to you, fear not, you will not die. Consequently Gideon built there an altar to the ever-living, and it is called the ever-living's peace to this day. It is near Aphrath of Eliezer. In the night again the ever-living said to him, Take the bull of your father's herd, and a second seven-year bull, and overthrow your father's altar to Baal, and break the shrine that is beside it, and build an altar to your ever-living God, on the top of this refuge on the mound, and take the two bulls, and offer as a burnt offering with the wood of the shrine which you have broken up. So Gideon took ten men of his servants, and did as the ever-living told him. But because he feared his father's family and the men of the village, he could not do it by day, so did it by night. When they arose in the morning and observed the altar of Baal thrown down and the shrine that was near it broken, and the two bulls burning upon the altar he had built, then each said to his neighbor, Who has done these things? So they examined and inquired and were told, Gideon the son of Joash has done them. The people of the village consequently said to Joash, Bring out your son and let him die, for he has overthrown the altar of Baal and has broken the shrine that was by it. But Joash replied to all who stood about him, Would you defend Baal? If he can help you, then he can defend himself. If he is a god, he can kill for himself this morning. Let him defend himself for the overthrowing of his altar. So they named him at once Jerubbaal, saying, Let Baal destroy him, for he overturned his altar. In consequence, the forces of Midian and Amalek and the Benai Kedem assembled together and encamped in the plain of Jezreel. But the spirit of the ever-living descended upon Gideon, and he blew the trumpet and summoned the Abiazarites after him, and sent messengers to all Manasseh, and also summoned them after him. And he also sent messengers to Ashur and Zebulun and to Naphtali, and they went up to meet him. Then Gideon said to God, if you will save Israel by my hand, as you promised, I will lay this fleece of wool on the level floor. If the dew is on the fleece only, and dryness upon all the ground, then I shall understand that you will save Israel as you have promised. And he arose in the morning and wrung the fleece, when as much dew ran from the fleece as filled a bucket with water. Gideon, however, said to God, Let not your anger burn against me, and I will speak once again. I will try another time with the fleece. Let it now be dry on the fleece only, while there is dew on the ground. So the ever-living made it thus that night. There was dryness in the fleece only, and upon the ground there came dew. Chapter 7 Then Jerubal, who was Gideon, arose, and all the people who were with him, and encamped in the well at Karod, overlooking from the north the camp of Morah upon the plain. But the ever-living said to Gideon, there are too many people with you for me to give the Midianites into your power, for fear Israel should glorify against me and say, My hand has saved myself. Therefore now proclaim in the hearing of the people and say, Who is afraid and timid? Let him return and depart to Mount Gilad. Consequently twenty-two thousand of the people departed, but there were left ten thousand. But the ever-living again said to Gideon, the people are too many. Order them down to the brook, and there select for yourself, and whoever replies to you thus, I will go with you, let him go with you. But all who say, I will not go with you, let him not go with you. So he took those men with him down to the brook, where the ever-living said to Gideon, All who lap with the tongue from the brook like a dog laps, place them by themselves, and all who bend on the knees to drink and the number of the lappers from the hand to their mouths was three hundred men, but all the rest of the people knelt on the knee to drink from the brook. 
Then the ever-living said to Gideon, With the three hundred men who lapped, I will rescue you and give Midian into your hand. So the people took their staves in their hands and their clothing, and all the force of Israel went off to their homes, except those three hundred brave men. And the camp of Midian was opposite those in the plain. And night came. Then the Lord said to him, Arise, descend to the camp, for I will give it to your hand. But if you fear the descent, go down with Fura, your squire, to the camp, when you will hear what they say, and after that embolden your hand. He therefore descended to the camp, and Fura, his squire, went down with him to the officers' quarters, who were over the camp, where Midian and Amalek and the Benai Kedem were spread over the plain like locusts for number, and their camels were innumerable like dust scattered on the shore of the sea for multitude. But Gideon proceeded, and perceived a man relating a dream to his comrade, who said, I have dreamed a dream, when I saw a round barley cake thrown into the camp of Midian, and it went to the general's pavilion and struck it, and it fell, but it bounded forward, and another pavilion fell. Then his comrade answered and said, That is nothing less than the sword of Gideon ben Yoash, the man of Israel. God will give Midian and all this camp into his power. But when Gideon heard this dream related, and its interpretation, he bowed down and returned to the camp of Israel, and said, Arise, for the Lord will give the camp of Midian to your hands. Then he divided the three hundred men into three divisions, and all of them took trumpets in their hands, with dark lanterns and lamps inside the dark lanterns. And he said to them, Watch me, and what I do you do the same, and when I come to the edge of the camp, what I do then you also do it. When I blow my trumpet, then all of you blow your trumpets with me all around the camp, and shout, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon! Then Gideon and the hundred men with him went to the headquarters side of the camp, where the officers were stationed, and sounded the trumpet, and opened the dark lanterns they carried. The three divisions also blew their trumpets, and waved their dark lanterns, and rushed on with the lanterns in their left hands, and the trumpets in their right, blowing and shouting, THE SWORD OF THE LORD AND OF GIDEON, and halted outside around the camp, and aroused all in the camp, who fled in terror. But the three hundred continued to blow the trumpets, and the ever-living turned the sword of each against his comrade in all the camp, and the camp fled in confusion to the edge of the meadows of Nekola near Tabaf. The man of Israel afterwards summoned Naphtali and Asher and all Manasseh, and they followed after Midian. Gideon also sent messengers to the whole of Mount Ephraim to say, Descend to meet Midian, and capture from them the fords at beth Bara and of the Jordan. So they called out every man of Ephraim, and captured the fords at beth Bara and at the Jordan, and captured the two princes of Midian, Oreb and Zaeb, and killed Oreb at the rock of Oreb, and executed Zaeb at the winepress of Zaeb, and continued the pursuit of Midian, but they brought the heads of Oreb and Zaeb to Gideon from beyond the Jordan. The end of chapters 1 through 7 of the Book of Judges. Recording by Mark Penfold.